guys, today we're gonna to talk about how you can dress younger and still look classy. These tips will allow you to keep your style. If you're like me, you love feminine silhouettes, you love trends, cutouts, all kinds of things that a lot of people would say a woman that is 52 years old is not able to wear. Do think that as you age, you do have to modify some of the things that you do. How you dress is such an expression of who you are. I don't think that it should change drastically. You can look at celebrities like Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, J-Lo, I'm trying to think of women that are like our age. Jennifer Aniston, they still have their same vibe but they just modify it to fit their age and their lifestyle. At the top, dress to express, not to impress. You want to dress in a way that tells the world who you are, what you're about. It's gonna be their first impression. So you never want to take away your true style and expression just to fit other people or other places. Like I always say, you might just want to modify that just a little bit. So we're gonna start with one of the biggest tips ever. And this is something I do all the time. Like I would say half of the time I buy things, I size up. Especially if you are buying something that's not well-made, which is a lot of the time with me, I will be purchasing something from, let's say H&M or a store kind of like that. I will typically size up. That way I know it is going to flatter my body a little bit more because as we age, we can be the same height, the same weight, but our weight has shifted, our body has changed. But if you will size up, you will notice your seams will hit a little bit better. The flow will be a little bit better, like in a dress. If you're wearing jeans, maybe it fits a little better through the um, I don't know what other word to say, but like the crotch area, you don't want it to be like hugging you. And a lot of times that extra weight that we have maybe in our bottom or in our tummies might make those same pair of jeans that we could wear when we were young at the same weight fit a little different because they might come up and hug a little bit more. So I would say without a doubt, one thing to think about is to size up. The biggest help I will ever give you is the fabric. The fabric makes the biggest difference in so many different ways. Ribbed. Ribbed fabric is gonna be our best friend because it's forgiving. It's usually stretchy. It usually doesn't cling to every rumple. There is just something about it that is very forgiving. It helps it lay better across your body, even across your chest, across your behind, on your arms, everything. Ribbed fabric will be your friend. Ruched, ruched fabric. We all love a good ruched dress. Even the most body-hugging, non-ribbed, inexpensive dress, if it has the right ruching, it can be very flattering, easy to wear, very age appropriate, you will love it. That's why ruched dresses are so popular. Another thing with fabric is, is it lined? So it can be a thinner fabric, but if it's lined, kind of like the Zara bodysuits, of the halter neck ones, so I size up in those, that way, the side of my boob isn't showing, and the fact that they are lined. If they weren't lined, I probably would not like them. I probably wouldn't wear them because it would be very difficult to wear a bra with those. Even if you wear a strapless, it shows. So with those, because I size up and because they are lined, I'm able to go without, and then I'm able to wear them with so many more things. So sizing up, lined, ruched, ribbed, all of those things make it so much better. A great example of this is the rose bodysuit from Express. That one is just such a win, win, win. It's got some control in it. Not a lot, but just enough to smooth and just kind of like hug your body. It's very ruched and the ruching, that's another thing. You have to make sure that the ruching is fine enough that it isn't one that's going to spread out like an accordion. So that one has the fine ruching and it's lined. 
So it's just a win-win all the way. Now on that one, I did not have to size up because it was a generous size. It's denim, especially with white denim. You need the thicker, nicer denim, preferably one with no stretch or little stretch. Like I am a small size, but my skin and muscles and muscle tone is never gonna be as firm as it was when I was 19 years old. So I sometimes like to get that firmer denim. I know that the stretchy, soft, thin denim is so much more comfortable, but if you will get the denim that is harder and thicker, it will give. It's not stretchy, but it will give as you wear it. And it won't show like all of those rumples, like on the backs of your legs. That is very tough to beat with a pair of white jeans. It takes a lot of trial and error. So a lot of times with white jeans, what will I do? I'll size up and then I'll make sure that I get a thick denim that is non-stretchy, that will just give a little bit if I want it to, and that just makes everything hang and lay better on your body. Colors. Now, I have watched videos where people were saying when you get over the age of 45 or 50, you should wear brighter colors, more colors, and I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I do love wearing color. Green, I love yellow, I love red. Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna keep it to a solid color. I think it is a classier look. I think it's easier most of the time what I prefer, but I do love certain prints. Last year, Walmart really had some great inexpensive dresses that I loved, and a lot of those were prints that you know were lined, they had ruching, I sized up, I did all of the things and I really, really enjoyed them. You're young, maybe you're in your teens and 20s, yes, maybe then black might be a little mature, but we know we're already mature. I don't think it necessarily ages you. I also love solid white. Another reason that I choose carefully the prints that I wear is if you're already wearing something with spaghetti straps or maybe a little shorter or showing some skin or anything that you have an inkling that you might feel a little insecure at your age wearing, I feel like solids might get a little bit less attention it's just like that one less detail to calm it down a little bit. Another thing, and I'm not sure this really goes into colors, but I'm just gonna add it in here, is watch the adornments. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of zippers or snaps. Have you ever gone to like a place like Forever 21? I haven't been there in so long. I used to go with Brooke, my daughter, who is now almost 23. And I would see things that I thought, wow, maybe I can wear that. Gosh, that looks so pretty. Sure enough, as soon as I picked it up, the whole back was cut out and had, you know, rhinestones going all the way around it. So you kind of want to keep your colors and your prints calm. Maybe try to think about that being a little bit classy and more subdued. And that way you can have maybe the spaghetti straps or a little cutout or a little bit shorter or something like that that you like, like I do. Another color tip I would give you is no more than two colors. If you wear more than two colors, it is going to be just an extra complication. And when you're dressing a little bit younger than you are, you want to keep everything as simple as possible. That way, when you have spaghetti straps, a cutout, something a little shorter, something a little bit more fitted, maybe you're choosing to wear a little bit of a heel, it simplifies things if you will just keep it to two colors. Yesterday, I wore a black pair of linen trousers, and then on the top, I had a hot pink bodysuit, you know, with the big flower right there. So I tried to keep it simple. That way, there's just not too much going on, and you feel like you're really put together. And though I was wearing something that was tight, and I had some skin showing, by wearing the linen, nice fabric, trousers with the pleats, it balanced that look and I felt amazing all day. Shoes. Shoes are, oh, I love shoes. Shoes make such a big difference. This is how you can take a formal looking dress like I have on today. You can put a casual, not as sexy, not as serious shoe with it and it gives it a whole different look. What I do with shoes is I try to make sure 
that if I'm wearing a sexy, tight, sized up, ribbed dress, but maybe it's tighter, maybe it's a little bit shorter, I'm not going to put on a stiletto heel. Unless it's a nice, casual, low profile wedge. A lot of times I will just wear a flip-flop. I like a simple Haviana flip-flop. Last year I got lucky and found the Gucci flip-flops. You know how much I wore those with my dresses. It's another good pair that I could wear with this dress today would be the Valentino bow flip-flops. I have those in black and I want to get those in nude because those are a fabulous pair of flip-flops to wear with a dressy dress if you don't want to wear heels. They're also good for traveling because they're light, they're thin. You can tuck them in your tote or your big bag this summer and have those in case your feet get tired. They are just a very, very valuable pair of shoes. Another pair of valuable shoes in my opinion are the Zara Clear heels because it's almost like you don't see them. We're going back to that simple look. You don't really see them. They're not serious. They're not, and I would say the Zara even more than the Schutz because I like the vinyl Schutz shoes also. Those are a little bit dressier because they have the stiletto heel. They're channeling a little bit of a sexier vibe. The Zara, I feel like it's a little bit more playful, a little bit more youthful. I think those shoes are ageless and I think they really help dresses not look quite as sexy or as serious and they help them look simpler. They help your whole line look simpler. Okay, let's go back to wedges. You don't want the clunky wedge. If you see a wedge and it has a huge clunky heel and a huge clunky platform, that is not going to look classy. It's not gonna let you walk classy. Sometimes even the wedges that aren't even that high, but the wedge goes the whole way across, they will make you walk clunky. You want a nice pitch, a wonderful, wonderful pair of wedges is the Dolce Vita. I love my Steve. I was about to say Steve Martin. Steve Madden, the clear ones. I hope those are still available somewhere. But I love I love the Castaner. They have a fabulous pitch. The Valentino, there are just a lot of wedges that will give you that nice posture, that nice walk, but they're not clunky. They're not over the top. They won't distract from what you're wearing. They won't call too much attention and they have a nice casual vibe. You want something like raffia, natural raffia, that automatically gives that summery sundress vibe, even to a dress that might be a little dressier or a little bit more sexy. If you will put a raffia or a cork or a nude sandal with that, it's going to bring it down on the sexy meter just a little bit. And it's you're not putting the message out there that I'm going to like the club. It's just like a nice daytime vibe. And last but not least, undergarments. It doesn't matter what your size undergarments are key. So what we want are things that smooth, 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 things that aren't noticed. Another way I use my undergarments and another Honey Love item is the crossover bra or any little simple or pretty bralette. I think a lot of people use the Free People bralette for this reason too. If you have a dress or a tank top or a bodysuit that might be a little low cut, you can always wear something pretty underneath that shows. I usually like to go with a tone on tone because if you know it's gonna show, just make sure it looks pretty with it. And then you can sometimes get away with a little lower cut item by wearing the right bra or bralette. A lot of times I would even get the Walmart or Kohl's cheap little black bralettes so it would give you the perfect amount of support without push-up cleavage and if the bra strap showed it was no big deal because it was just a little spaghetti strap so that's something if you've been here with me you know i always look for is a pretty bra strap because i like wearing a full bra i'll wear a strapless bra if i have to but most of the time, I would rather just have a nice, simple, or pretty bra strap that shows. Now let's get into the push-up. I am not a fan of a push-up bra on anyone. I just don't think 
especially if you are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and it's not that I don't like cleavage, because I do. It's just I like a more natural cleavage. You want them up, but not smushed in together. When you start doing that smushed in together, unless you can't help it, if you can't help it, just go for it. I mean, it's not, I think boobs are beautiful and they're a part of the woman's body. I don't know when um, skin and the decollete and all of that became taboo. But you can look back into the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Jane Fonda, all of the women that are admired the most for their beauty through the ages, they would have cleavage and wear off-the-shoulder gowns, and it wasn't taboo back then. But in my case, I don't want I don't want that try-hard look. If I'm already wearing a sexy dress, I don't need that extra. So I like a simple, plain, smoothing bra that gives good support, but not full push-up. No padding. No panty lines. You guys, I understand if you don't like thongs. I do. When I see a woman that looks so good and then I see her panty lines, even if she has thongs on, and I see the panty line up here. Even if I see that on myself, I don't like it. The most comfortable, simplest, feel like you have nothing on pair of thongs are gonna be your skims. They feel like nothing. You will not feel them at all. It will not bother you, and they just look so pretty underneath your clothes. They have great nude colors for all skin tones. They stretch out like this. They are just, I wash them, dry them. They're fabulous. Hey, okay, you guys, I think that's it. I have so much more I could say, and I'm sure I will. So leave me your tips down below. Let me know what you think about this video and if you would like to see more. My outfit today is a beautiful dress that I got from Abercrombie & Fitch. It has so many things that I have just talked about in this video. First of all, it's a solid color. Second of all, it's lined. It has a slip underneath it. Third, it's pleated. Right there with ribbed and ruched comes pleated. I still have the cutouts because I have always loved crop tops and cutouts. I just think a woman's skin is beautiful. This dress is a fabulous, perfect wedding guest dress. So if you want to dress it up more than I have, then I would just put on a great pair of strappy sandals. If you want to dress it up even more for maybe a nighttime wedding, I would put it on with a pump. If you want to wear it more daytime and give it more of a casual vibe, then I would do like I have done and put it with some clear heels. I would not put this one with a wedge because I don't feel like the fabric is going to go with a wedge. I think you need to keep it with that same look, but if you will put it even with a nude pair of sandals, the nude pair of Valentinos, because those are the patent, I think it goes with the vibe of the dress. And another thing I did to keep it kind of simpler is I wore casual jewelry. So I've got on my bangles, the hoops from Jenny Bird. So hoops definitely make this dress a little bit more casual. They bring it down a little bit more daytime. And then I put on more of a casual watch, no ring on my hand. This is my, this is an aura ring and my wedding ring. And this simple little necklace I wear every day. So if I were to put on big sequin earrings or even my big rhinestone earrings and maybe the matching rhinestone necklace, then that is going to take it to a different level. And it will look good, but I'm just showing you how you can take kind of a sexy, more formal dress and bring it down a little bit to your everyday life. Still feel like you get to wear what you wanna wear and feel good about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure did, and I will see you next time.